Well, hey class, this is a very quick uh, demonstration video on hatching, cross hatching, and stippling, um, as opposed to other shading techniques. All of these work on what's known as a density of mark principle, which simply means the more stuff you put down on the more material you put down on the page, the darker it looks and references than something that is tonal. Um, so, in a very quick manner, I'm going to do um, just a portion of our brick. All right, and if I give the basic structure to the brick, looking something like this. Um, if I were to do hatching, it involves creating, say, a cast shadow that does this. Single lines moving in a direction. Now, I've kicked them down on an angle because that suggests that a plane rests in space like into space rather than flat and opposing you. This is a, a convention, folks. It is not a right and a wrong thing. Um, it is a very Western approach to drawing. Um, if I incorporate then a little contour line, watch what happens very quickly. See? Now, if I take that same um, idea, and I'm going to just grab part of our brick here real quick. All right. If I were to take that same idea, what I can do is, if I were to draw the lines in the same direction, it looks like the same surface. If I draw the lines in, a, in an opposing direction, or if I do what's called cross-hatching, which does this, and I'm going to be a little assertive with the process here so you can see it on the camera. Um, I might be more subtle if I was working on a critical drawing. But you see what I can do here? I can then suggest that the surface has changed direction. Right? Now, it becomes difficult to make these things move towards an edge and typically what you want to do then is pull away from the edge and if you're trying to fill a space like I am you might want to do this from two directions um, pull from both edges towards the center and you can see what happens as I build up those marks and I can make heavier marks if I need to in order to create a denser surface now we also talked about something that looks like uh, stippling. And stippling is, quite frankly, this is hard to demonstrate on a camera because stippling is simply leaving dots of tone. And it's not going to work well all by itself. So typically what you would do is find, um, create a new drawing here. I would not incorporate stippling, for example, in the same drawing as hatching and cross hatching. Those, those two tend to work well together. All right. Instead, what I might do to suggest, um, I'm going to overestimate this to give myself some space to draw, is to create dots. Now sometimes this is done in a very dense pattern sort of way, uh, very mechanical, but stippling is nothing more than making dots. It's more commonly used, not with a pencil, but with a pen. So I'm going to tell you that if you want to really get something that works well, you can shift to a pen, and <clears throat> a, a fine-tipped pen, including um, something that looks like a design marker or something of that nature. I'm going to do this in order to create... I'm going to try and create a shadow. Now you can see this is a real fuss budgety kind of drawing technique. And so I'm going to tell you when you do this particular one, you're going to be better off doing this on a small scale for the time you have rather than doing a large scale. The hatching techniques lend themselves to a larger scale. All right. Now you can see as I create this graded surface, if I intersperse these marks in a different way, different densities, I get the suggestion of shadow very, very quickly, right? Uh, and 
And so that's what we're trying to indicate is more or less reflected light on a given surface. Hope that helps. Um, and all right. And then of course there is the the blending technique we can use. If you want to do a demonstration of blending, you've probably all done this already. A thousand times with a pencil. But a blending technique would be take the edge of the pencil and just create that massive tone and lighter or darker pressure leaves more or less. This is entirely dependent on the tool you're using and the paper you select, right? But in this case, no stroke is evident. And sometimes you want to take your eraser and build up that same surface, right? Or alter it in some way. And part of the trick to getting this even tone is to constantly change the direction of the strokes you're making so that they don't look like hatching techniques. grab an eraser real fast. This is a gum eraser, but um, what I can do is use an eraser to smudge. Right. And we're going to talk more about this technique in the next assignment, so don't get overly concerned about making it work well right now. We'll use the eraser in a different way. All right. So there you go, three processes.